Welcome to a mod spotlight featuring Optifine. Optifine is a mod that optimizes your client side of Minecraft and also allows you to use shaders. We will be going into detail about what changes we can make with this mod and how to activate shaders. In the description, you'll find a timestamp list of the sections I will be covering in this video. To start us off, you may have heard of Optifine because of its zoom feature by holding down the C button. This is one of Optifine's main features. With Optifine, we can enable shaders to our Minecraft game, which we will be getting into in just a moment. Navigate to your options in the main menu. I would suggest doing it in-game so we can view any changes that have been made. Once you've clicked the options button, click video settings. Everything we will be covering will be listed here. Let's start with some shaders since that is most likely the reason why you are here. Click on shaders. This is where you can select any of the shaders you have downloaded and enable them. To easily access the shaders folder, click on the shaders folder button in the bottom left corner to open it up. Move your shader pack into this folder to access it. I will be using a shader pack called Silder's Enhanced Default. There will be a link in the description to this shader pack. On the right hand side, we have some modifiers we can adjust for our shader packs. Increasing quality on any of these modifiers can reduce frame drop significantly. I would suggest having the render and shadow quality at one times, as well as hand depth, but here's a comparison of the available qualities. Render and shadow quality have 5 options, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1, 1 1.5, and 2. Anti-aliasing doesn't really make a difference, however if you're going to be taking HD screenshots, turn anti-aliasing on. If you plan on using resource packs, keep specular map and normal map on. Normal maps and specular maps change some textures to look more shiny, matte, or bumpy. Here's some examples. Do note, some shader packs don't support normal and specular maps. If you wish to modify your shader pack even further, there is a button in the bottom right corner. I will not be going over it since it will be a video of its own. Do take a look at these options, depending on your shader pack, some of these will be turned off or on. Many of these options will be influenced by what you want enabled. Alright, back to video settings. With Optifine installed, hovering your mouse over any option will give you a brief description of what it can do. Let's start with graphics. Fancy or fast? Most computers nowadays can run fancy without any issue. This is a broad average over all graphical options. This is technically your high and low graphic option button. Hover your mouse over render distance. You are now able to load up to 64 chunks away rather than 32 in normal Minecraft. But do note, this primarily only affects single player worlds. In servers, your render distance will act like it's 16, but when you travel very far away, the chunks will remain loaded, but only visually. Thankfully, Optifine gives us an example of how far each chunk is. 1M means 1 meter, which is 1 block. So, tiny, which is 2 chunks, is 32 blocks away. 16 chunks is 256 blocks. 64 is 124 blocks. Smooth lighting. It's still the same as regular Minecraft, however we have a slider at the bottom that we can use. Keep it at 100% if you have a decent computer. Many old computers that have aged will need to have smooth lighting at 0%. It makes lights have a more immersive effect on the world. Max frame rate. This slider has two buttons mixed together, frame rate and vsync. You can find these separately on regular Minecraft. If you move the slider all the way to the left, it will turn your frame rate into V-Sync. V-Sync will work with what your monitor supports. VBOs. VBOs is an amazing button that keeps your Minecraft a lot more optimized. Let's say you're only looking in one direction while traveling, not really looking around as much. With VBOs on, it won't render what's behind you or things on your sides because you can't see it. Mobs will still be rendered though. It won't even load caves and underground areas beneath you because you can't actually see it. This results in better FPS. If I quickly look to the side, you'll see it generates the chunk that I couldn't see because I never looked there. Dynamic Lights This is an amazing feature even if you don't have Optifine in your mod list. This enables torches in your hand to emit light. You don't have to place them down. Even arrows that are on fire emit light. 
drop a torch as well and it will emit light. Technically this allows us to have temporary light sources. This should definitely be in vanilla Minecraft. Do note this feature will not make legitimate light sources. Mobs will still spawn. Dynamic FOV. This option is enabled by default in regular Minecraft. But when you pull a bow, start to fly or sprint, your FOV changes to stimulate your going faster. You can turn that off with this button. Now we are on some more technical, visual, and performance categories. Click on quality, which is located beside the shaders button. Mip map levels. This slider makes objects in the distance more detailed. Mip map type smooths the details between closest to nearest. Here's a before and after. Anisotropic filtering adds even more details to mip maps. Usually this is unnecessary unless one is wanting to get some nice screenshots or make a cinematic video. Anti-aliasing will require a restart and doesn't work with shaders, but if you don't have shaders, this will make your background very sharp. Emissive textures. Certain blocks glow in certain resource packs. This is where you can turn it off and on. Random entities. Random entities. Some resource packs have multiple textures of one mob. This button enables or disables that. Better grass. I would suggest turning this off. It turns all grass block sides that have a grass block lower of it to a full grass texture. Better snow. This is a feature that should be in regular Minecraft. It makes snow appear on fences and tall grass if it's neighboring snow. This is by far one of my favorite features. Connected textures. This will make some blocks connect to the same blocks such as glass panes and glass blocks. Here's an example. Natural textures. Another button that should be in regular Minecraft. It will flip and rotate all textures to make textures have less patterns. For example, this dirt wall. Custom items. Another button to turn off resource pack items. Custom entity models. Some resource packs have custom 3D models that they add to the game. One can disable it with this button. Go back to video settings. Go to details. So we now have some different buttons, however these are more visual like clouds. We have three options with this button, off, fast, or fancy. Off just turns off all clouds completely, but keeps shader clouds on. Fast is a low quality cloud that is just a plane across the sky. Fancy makes all clouds three dimensional. Cloud height changes how far clouds can go. Vanilla Minecraft cloud height is at 128 blocks which will be at 0% or off. 100% makes the clouds rise to 256 blocks, which is world height. I would suggest having it at 50% or higher. Many of the extreme hills will be adjacent to that. Trees. This is an option that affects leaf blocks. There are four different options one can choose from. One of them is opaque, while the other two are transparent. Rain and snow. Only affects how much snow and rain we see. In fast mode, we see less snow and rain. In fancy mode, we see a lot of snow and rain. Sky. I'm not sure why one would want to turn this off, but sky acts very odd with this off. I guess you could use it for a green screen background. Stars. Want to make Minecraft feel even more lonely? Turn this off to have no stars in sight. Sun and moon. Hate seeing square fire during the daytime or square planet at night? Obliterate them with this button. Fog. Fog is the white mist one sees at their render distance limit. I prefer the fast version rather than the fancy. Fancy has a dim fog that's right at the border of your render distance, while fast has a very thick layer. But if you're playing on a small render distance, don't use fast fog. Fog start. If you have a large render distance, 12 or more, this can make the fog seem more realistic. I use 0.2 fog since it fades across the land very well. Held item tooltips. If you are switching to different things on your hotbar, you'll notice some text that shows up saying what it is. With this button, you can turn it off. Entity shadows. Don't want to see shadows below your pig farm? Turn them off with this button. Alternate blocks. For some resource packs, they might use 3D variations of blocks. This will turn it off. Swamp colors. Hate how the swamp looks like a bunch of pigs took a dump in it? Turn it back to a luscious green with this button. Biome blend. This slider is amazing for what it does. 
It blends neighboring biomes together so the grass variants don't make you have a heart attack from breaking your immersion. This is a must. 5x5 seems to be good enough, but if you have a beefy computer, crank it all the way up to 15x15. 15 15. Head back to Video Settings, then click Performance. These options we are about to talk about are key to Optifine's enhancements to Minecraft. Smooth FPS helps level out your FPS when possible so you don't have any dips in FPS. Smooth World. This button removes lag spikes that are common in vanilla Minecraft when traveling. Fast Render. Make sure your GPU doesn't get overloaded when rendering chunks. However, this doesn't work with shaders. Fast Math. Remember using cos and sine in high school? Well, I do, and I completely forgot how to use them. Well, this button optimizes the CPU cache to work more effectively using cos and sine. Chunk Updates. This is how fast chunks will load up. Even on good computers, one needs to be careful on how high this is adjusted. If you have too high of a render distance, such as 32, and mix it with a chunk update number of 5, it will most likely lag your system because it will try and load all chunks in your render distance at once. Dynamic Updates With this turned on, when you are standing still, more chunks will load. This makes it so more chunks are forced to load in. This enables a more immersive gameplay when exploring. Render Regions is a recently added option to in Optifine. Even though it was added in March of 2018, if you use a rather large render distance, like 32 or higher, this option can double your FPS, especially with VBOs enabled, which we covered earlier in the video. Lazy Chunk Loading Works like the smooth FPS option by distributing the rendering load. However, if your world is rendering strangely, toggle it off. Smart Animations Some texture packs have animations on their textures. With this on, animations that can't be seen by the player will not be animated. Head back to video settings, then click animations. I don't think I need to go over this in detail, but this controls all the particles in your Minecraft world. There are a few important buttons here to take note of though. There's an all on and all off button for easy testing. With the particles button, one can decrease all particles by a percentage. There are three different particle buttons, all, decreased, and minimal. Decreased has about 50% of the regular amount of particles. Minimal has about 10% to 0% of the amount of particles. Some particles won't even show up at all. Head back to video settings, then click other settings. Lagometer. Need to do some debugging on why your Minecraft game is lagging? Highlighting your mouse over the button will give a list of colors that will indicate what is causing lag in your system. Debug Profile. This will give a pie shaped tooltip in your F3 settings. It's similar to Lagometer, but this one is easier if you're new to debugging. Show FPS. Turning this button on will show your FPS in the top left corner. This FPS counter is not the best. The first number indicates average FPS. The second number indicates minimum FPS. Average FPS ignores lag spikes while minimum is based on the largest lag spikes. Advanced tooltips shows extended information for items that are not regularly shown. It can show the durability of items, its asset name, and MBT tags. This works very well with modded items since finding their asset names are very difficult. If you use world edit with modded blocks, this is perfect. Weather. This button only works in single player worlds. It will disable weather in your Minecraft world. With this button off, attempting to change the weather will not have any effect. Weather effects will still appear in multiplayer worlds with this toggled off. Time. With this button, you can make it permanently day or night. Full screen. One can make it so when your game is loaded, it will automatically go into full screen mode. Auto save. One can change when your game is saved. However, I, have, I haven't had any issues with saving. Automatically, your game is saved when you open up your menu. Screenshot size. With this button, you can double the size of your screenshot or quadruple it. However, it doesn't work with fast render nor anti-aliasing. Show GL errors. This will show errors with your Minecraft game in, in the chat. 
Usually this has to do with graphical driver issues. If you know your game is okay and errors are popping up, turn it off here. I would suggest keeping it on just in case. Full screen mode. Force Minecraft to be used in certain resolution in full screen mode. I would suggest just using your computer screen resolution instead. And that's everything covered about the Optifine mod. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about anything I may have missed. I can provide additional info if you require it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like my content. Till next time. See ya.